Y voy a pasar a hacer unos comentarios. Está relacionado con el método. Now I'd like to make a few comments about method and polylogism. However, before I begin, we need to talk a little about rationalism from the perspective of Mises. That ugly word rationalism derives etymologically from the term reason. Y de hecho, la razón del ser humano es... In fact, human reason is the most important tool we have for getting along in life. Does anyone doubt that? I don't know if any of you has ever had a family member, maybe an elderly person with Alzheimer's disease. When we lose our intellectual abilities, we become totally helpless. We can no longer cope with the world around us. We become totally dependent. This illustrates better than anything else that the most important tool we have for getting along in life is human reason. Now, our recognition of that fact should not mean we commit the error of deifying human reason. Regrettably, many in the field of science have done just that. In fact, we could say there are two types of rationalism. We will call the first type false, erroneous, exaggerated, unscientific rationalism. What does this rationalism consist of? It consists of the assumption that the human mind is much more powerful than it really is. It consists of the belief that through reason, man can come to know much more than human reason could ever tell him in reality. Well, this exaggerated, erroneous rationalism provides the foundation for the scientificism. The scientism, the positivism we have discussed in previous classes. In the field of the social sciences, this rationalism has fueled social engineering, econometrics. In the field of politics, it is the basis for socialism for communism, for all interventionism. Through the coercive power of the state, adherents of such rationalism aim to create a utopia, a heaven or nirvana on earth. They assume all we need to do is get rid of bad leaders and choose some good and wise ones, because the human mind is capable of organizing a much better world. Erroneous, exaggerated, false rationalism emerged. It exploded with the French Revolution. The origin of this rationalism lies in the French Revolution of 1789. Religious images were destroyed in churches and replaced with the goddess of reason. Revolutionaries deified reason. And even tried to rename the months. Recuerden el 18 Brumario de Napoleón Bonaparte, el título. Remember the coup of 18 Brumaire staged by Napoleon Bonaparte, who would later become emperor. People who hold exaggerated rationalist views and deify human reason believe that human institutions are imperfect because they have evolved, and that they can be improved from above, that they can be redesigned, that they can be deliberately modified at the whim of human beings. In the field of law, exaggerated rationalism takes the form of legal positivism, and its main representative was Hans Kelsen. Legal positivists recognize as law all decisions of a legislative body under popular sovereignty. The context of those decisions does not matter. What if the decision is to kill, to commit genocide and gas six million Jews? Well, that's the law, the power of the state, exerted from above on those below. In economics, exaggerated rationalism is expressed in a multitude of textbooks. For instance, do you remember Samuelson's book? If you pick up Samuelson's introductory textbook entitled Economics, there you will read that economics is a science that must respond to three questions. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. How absurd! Economic agents never consider such questions, nor can they consider them. Notice that the author is presenting the viewpoint of an omniscient superior being who would look down at all of us as if we were ants and say, Hey, one moment, what are you going to produce? How are you going to produce it? And for whom? No one in society asks himself such a question. No one bases her actions on what society as a whole is going to produce. 
Instead, millions and millions of human beings are interacting with each other and trying to get on in life. One person is trying to produce something to sell to someone else, to gain a profit, to achieve a certain end or objective. The mere act of approaching the economic problem as such authors do is evidence of the scientificist conceit of those with exaggerated rationalist views, people drunk on their own importance. Indeed, exaggerated rationalism is extremely dangerous. All the social conflicts, all the wars and all the genocide you can imagine stem from exaggerated rationalism, from the attempt to make a better world from above and impose it on the rest of society by force.